I wanted to make a panini for today's video. I don't have a panini press and I'm sure you guys don't either. And I'm not gonna go out and buy one just for the purpose of this. So we adapted and that is what cooking is all about. This right here is a chicken pesto sandwich. It is absolutely perfect. The flavor is so good and that chicken's perfectly cooked as well. Let's get straight into it. Starting out, we're going to make our pesto. Add one bunch of basil to a food processor along with 10 grams of pine nuts, toasted or untoasted, it's up to you. One clove of garlic as well as the juice of half a lemon. You can also add the zest as well, but it doesn't really need to go in there. Along with that, add in 15 grams of parmesan cheese, make sure it's freshly grated, then place on the lid. Chuck this onto a high speed and then blend this up until it's nice and thick. Obviously we haven't added any oil at this stage, but we will be doing that in the next step. Once it is blended, make sure you scrape it down if need be. Add in extra virgin olive oil to your desired consistency. I added about 50 milliliters worth for this, and you do want this to be quite thick, that way we can spread it onto our sandwich. Check and adjust the seasoning levels, adding in a little bit of salt. Pepper isn't really necessary, but definitely can go in there. Then we can remove this from the blender, pour it into a bowl or any container you have, or leave it in the blender to save on dishes, leaving us with this beautiful basil pesto that can go in the fridge until we're ready to serve. Next is the chicken. I'm using chicken breast for this recipe, but you can definitely use thigh, and there's a couple of little tenderloins on there for a treat. We're going to butterfly the chicken for this recipe. Place the palm of your hand on the top of the chicken, then use a sharp knife to cut through the center horizontally. Just continue following that cut to open it up like a butterfly, hence the name, and then just slice it in half through that cut to create two even sized fillets. Depending on the size, you might need to bang these out just to flatten them and make sure they're even sized the whole way, that way they'll cook at the same time. And if you don't have a meat tenderizer, you can just use the bottom of a pan. Let's then add this into a mixing bowl and follow this up with one teaspoon of garlic powder for that nice concentrated flavor. One teaspoon of sweet paprika for those warm peppery notes and color. Half a teaspoon of chili flakes for a little bit of heat, this is optional. As well as one teaspoon of dried oregano for a little bit of a herbaceous kick. Add in two teaspoons of olive oil to get these lubed up as well as a generous pinch of salt and pepper. Then use clean hands or some tongs just to mix this around, making sure everything is evenly combined. That way those flavors can become friends. Place a large pan over medium high heat. Add in one tablespoon of olive oil, getting this really hot. Then we can add in the chicken. I like to spread out the first one just to move that oil around. And you can do this in batches if you need to, as well as squeezing in those cheeky tenderloins if you're using them. As for the tenderloins, these will take about two minutes on each side until being completely cooked through and super juicy. And with the fillets, we wanna cook these for about three to three and a half minutes on each side, getting that beautiful golden crust all over and obviously being juicy in the center. We can then remove those tenderloins, cooking the fillets for about two more minutes before removing them as well, placing them onto that tray to rest. And we're going to allow them to rest for about five minutes. That way the juices can redistribute. In the meantime, whilst our chicken's resting, we can prepare everything else. Right here I have Turkish loaf, but you can use any bread of your choice. I use Turkish loaf just because it has plenty of flavor and a beautiful aeration. And all we need to do with this is slice it in half. Right here I have two tomatoes. You might only need one depending on the size of your tomatoes. And we need about five to six slices per portion. I recommend slicing them quite thick as well. That way in the overall product, you'll get a beautiful fresh flavor. Last but not least, I've got one ball of fresh mozzarella cheese. I'm going to slice this about the same thickness as the tomatoes. That way we'll get about four or five slices per sandwich. And you can also shred this as well, but please don't buy that store-bought shredded stuff. So now that we're ready to go, we can add the pesto onto both sides of that Turkish bread or whatever bread you're choosing. Make sure you lather it up though, get a lot on there for extra flavor. I recommend adding two of those fillets on there as well, just to bulk this up. Then we can place over that mozzarella cheese. And again, that's about five to six pieces. Then I'm using a blowtorch right here just to melt that cheese, getting this nice and scorched up and beautifully golden. If you don't have one of these, you can place this under the grill or broiler just to get a bit of color onto it, as well as melting. And also don't forget to take those Instagram pictures just because you're using a bit of fire. Anyway, once that's nice and melted, add over those tomato slices. Again, four to five pieces. Season these up well with sea salt flakes as well as cracked black pepper. I used about 20 cracks worth. Place over that top lid, push this down, getting this nice and compact. Then we can get these nice and toasted. As for toasting, I highly recommend doing it in a pan, but you can do it in a grill or broiler. I'm using a non-stick pan over a medium high heat with one teaspoon of olive oil. Place the sandwich in upside down. It's a lot easier to work with. Then push this down to make it nice and compact and get that even heat. I am using a palette knife to help me here, but you can use a spatula if you don't have a palette knife. I know not everyone has one of those. Toast this for about two to two and a half minutes, just until it's beautifully golden brown. Carefully flip it over repeat that exact same process and then remove it from the stovetop. Let's then slice this absolute beauty of a sandwich in half and that bread's really crusty by the way, revealing that colorful and delicious center. All that is left to do is get stuck into this and we can then dig in. Mm. 
That is so good. The chicken's so juicy. The pesto is delicious with that mozzarella cheese. Tomato adds a bit of freshness as well as the lemon juice in the pesto. It really adds a beautiful acidity to this. And then obviously the crunchy shell from that bread. Perfect combination, definitely do try this recipe. And if you enjoy this video, hit that like button, really does help me out and consider subscribing along with hitting the bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.